This video will introduce you to Distribution Engine's key features for Service Cloud customers interested in support case assignment. We'll run through some use cases and show you how to navigate around the tool. Distribution Engine is a native Salesforce application used for the automated assignment of cases or other objects amongst teams of people, balancing workload, availability, skills and other criteria in order to effectively match work to people. Distribution Engine is designed around teams and these usually reflect the teams in your own organization. Within the Distribution Teams tab, you have two views, a list view and a process view. The list view shows you the teams that you've set up within your org. Each team can be created to distribute one type of Salesforce object, such as a case or a lead. You can add or clone a team, activate and deactivate teams, and reorder the teams to run in the order you would like. The process view allows you to see all of your distribution logic in one place. You can see how queues link to distributors and easily navigate around your setup. Teams contain the users that Distribution Engine will be assigning to. So let's jump into one of my teams and take a look. My EMEA service team is set up to distribute cases but it works in the same way for any other Salesforce object. The side menu here allows you to easily navigate through various options, including setup of distributors, waiting in caps, and setting distribution hours, amongst other things. The Home tab at the top provides a Team Summary, where you can view your team members and check their availability, as well as see an overview of the distributors you've got set up. Here, under Team Members, you can see who is part of the team, and these are my Salesforce users that I've added to the team and who we'll be assigning cases to. We can check their status, and we can toggle them on and off if needed. Below, we have our Distributors, and these are the rules that determine how cases are going to be assigned to the team. A few things to mention about the distributors. As you can see, you can have multiple distributors within a team and they run from top to bottom. So here it's going to run my priority one cases distributor first, followed by my priority two cases and finish with my priority three cases distributor. These can also be reordered if needed by selecting the reorder distributors option on the top right and dragging and dropping. Let's head into the detail of the Priority 1 Cases Distributor and I'll show you what that looks like. We have the name of the distributor at the top. Below that, we can choose our distribution method. So this is how the cases are going to be shared out. If you're just interested in fairness, you can use Round Robin or load balancing if you want to manage people's workloads. If you're looking to resolve duplicates, we do have Sticky. Or if you want to assign based on ownership, say for example, to ensure cases that are reopened go to the original owner, dedicated agent, or account manager, you can use the related owner option. It's also worth mentioning that with round robin and load balancing. There are additional options to allow you to balance workload by the number of cases or by the total value or complexity of those cases. For example, by assigning a different case complexity value to denote the effort required. Next up, we've got the source. Typically, cases will be sitting in the queue and in this example, assigned from the case queue. You can also assign from a designated Salesforce user or assigned based on a certain status value in a pick list. For example, it lets you assign cases when they change to a certain status value. For example, new to assigned. And then we have the field based filter. So this lets you select which cases our distributor is allocating. And in my example, it's only sending out high priority cases. Here, you can also start to build up your criteria. So you can add a row, which filters, for example, by case type, where I can select, let's say, feature request. 
Filter logic can also be used where I can change the default and condition to an or if I so wish. The next section is team member filter and you can use this if you want to be selective about who you want the cases to go to. So you can either choose the agents you want to be given cases or you can use tags. So tags allow you to provide more information about your agents and the cases they'll work. And these are totally configurable, but it can be skills or areas of expertise or spoken language or general attributes such as seniority. Distribution Engine can then make intelligent allocations based on this information. So here, cases can be given to agents where there is a skill match found. So if I select product knowledge as the tag collection, and then also select product knowledge on the case object, we can then link a field on the case object with the tags held by the agents. And in this example, we're linking the product knowledge field on the case with the product knowledge tag collection. Next up, we've got waiting and caps. Here we have the option to wait our team members to determine what proportion of cases are given to them. This is great if you want to give more senior agents more cases, or if you've got junior agents who aren't quite as ready to take on as many just yet. We could say Clint here is a senior agent, so let's dial him up to two cases for everyone that everybody else is getting. Peter, who's recently joined, will dial him down to half as many. These weightings can be used by both the round robin and load balancing methods of assignments. Thinking about capping, we have two levels of caps. We have team level caps and distributor level caps. At the team level, we have time-based caps where we could set up, for example, daily, weekly, or monthly caps. We also have distributor level capping, where I could limit my agents to, let's say, two priority one cases per day. Once they receive these two priority one cases from this priority one distributor, they won't receive any more priority ones until we're into the next day. We also have the option of using active capping, and we consider a case to have an active status where it is currently resulting in some work for the agent. So for example, a case with a status of working is probably active, and we can also cap based on the number of active cases they're currently assigned to. Distribution hours is where we can control when that assignment happens. Whether that's going to be round the clock, so as soon as the case comes in, it gets assigned, or more typically within set hours, which are the working hours of the team. Now, one of the benefits of using set hours is if you wanted to track time to contact, for example, you're not counting the hours outside of their working hours. Those distribution hours can also be applied at team le member level. So Clint here is currently at team level hours. If I click his name, I can flip him across to shift hours. So here, the early morning shift, for example. So we can override those hours at team member level if needed. Having mentioned time to contact previously, we have a couple of areas of tracking that I'd like to mention. So tracking comes in two parts, action tracking and SLAs. Firstly, what we call action tracking, this enables you to track from the time of assignment to the point when, in this case, the case status changes to working. Now that case status may be changed manually by the agent, or we could listen out for Salesforce events. So in this case, I'm listening out for call or email type events. So if an event is created against the case, then Distribution Engine will automatically update the record to working and calculate how long that took. On the other side of tracking, we have SLAs. And these are basically alerts which help to track key targets in terms of time to contact. I have one set up here which says if after 30 minutes from the time of assignment the status is still equal to new 
then the agent hasn't followed up in time and the default action here would be to send out an email notification stating that they've just missed the SLA and they need to take some action. Where they haven't picked up the case in time, we can take this a step further by pulling the case back into the queue and getting it assigned to another agent. And I'll show you how to do that next. So here, via the distributor level settings, if I click into one of my distributors, let's leave that first 30 minute SLA as a warning and reassign on the second, so the 60 minute SLA. Once back in the queue, distribution engine will then automatically reassign the case to another agent. Following tracking and SLAs, we come to assignment rejection. Here we can enable rejection at the team level or at the distributor level. So let's say a case arrives and for whatever reason it's not workable or it's not been allocated to the best agent. The agent have the option to reject the case as long as they give a reason. And when their turn comes round again, they'll get an additional case to replace the one that they rejected. Under post assignment, we can optionally select a pick list field to change a status or perhaps trigger a workflow or some other process. You can also decide if you want to e if you want email notifications from each distributor here as well. There are a couple of other things that I'd like to mention. Firstly, distribution out of office. So this is where the managers or the agents themselves, if you choose to give them access, can enter out of office entries such as PTO or sick leave. Put in a start date and an end date and distribution will then take them out of the assignment between those dates. If you'd like a glimpse of your team's performance, you can check out the analytics. So everything in distribution engine is logged and you can see it visualized at distributor level or at team member level. Additionally, you can create your own dashboards, including distribution volumes, breakdown by agent or distributor, and time to action so you can keep an eye on whether critical SLAs or targets are being hit. Thanks for watching. And if you'd like any more information on the topics I've covered here or how to set things up, please have a look around our knowledge base or get in touch if you have any further questions.